Alright, so some of you may recognize that because I put a video up just the other day of a little live performance I did right here using all of this stuff. Um, and I just thought I would like talk through it because I had some requests to do that and also I just feel like that's probably a wise thing to do. Um, good fodder for a YouTube video. Um, and because I'm using this stuff, especially the Octatrack, in sort of slightly different ways than I normally use it. So, uh, it's probably a good uh, place to sort of look a bit deeper into it. So, let's start with the Octatrack. Um, so normally, or, or frequently, um, when I use the Octatrack, especially in my studio, but also live, um, I tend to use it kind of like as an instrument, um, in the sense that I'm making, I'm constructing sounds on it, uh, using it, like obviously I'm using samples, but I'm, I'm mangling those samples or I'm processing them so much that the, the track is the, the main thing that's responsible for those, the sound of those samples, um, the way they turn out in the end, like whether that's with beats, um, <clears throat> or synth sounds or whatever, um, it's a very creative tool and I tend to use it that way, creatively. Um, but this time, uh, because, uh, for a few reasons, I, I decided to use it more like Ableton Live. Like if I had a laptop, um, on stage with me when I was playing live, um, and I just had some, like, really long loops running. So, basically, that's exactly what I've done. Um, I've got some extremely long loops, um, playing here. This is a pad, and it is 32 bars long, um, <clears throat> which is very long. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're, they're all, like this one's 16 bars long, uh, that one's 16, that one's 16, and that one's 64 bars long. So, <clears throat> you know, they're very long. <laughs> um, and this one especially, uh... Like it's... Not only is it a really long uh, loop, but it's it's not like it's it's kind of just improvised playing <clears throat> for 64 bars um, using a really nice bell sound. And the reason I've used it like this is because a it sort of suits a lot of the music that I'm making at the moment, which is kind of like housey, chilled out, kind of progressive stuff. Um, but I've also been using a piece of software called UVI Falcon. A lot and uh, you can check out UVI's YouTube channel and look at the tutorials for that for Falcon um, and trust me you'll you'll want it immediately like it's it's one of the one of the most powerful software synths around as far as I'm concerned um, and it just sounds beautiful um, it's got an amazing reverb in it called Sparkverb which you can buy on its own as well um, <clears throat> but it's just it's just a stunning piece of software, and I've been making a lot of music uh, using just that software. Like it's a whole, it's a whole um, multi-timbral like uh, workstation suite, I suppose. Um, and I've just been like making whole tracks using it and stuff like that. So I wanted to take some of those sounds, like particularly pads, because it's just an amazing pad machine, <clears throat> and and move them onto the op track so that I could play live without a computer. Because I hate I hate bringing a computer live, and at the moment I don't even have a laptop anyway. So, um, and so basically, this is the like the this is the UVI Falcon machine. This is playing all the pads and uh, longer segments of the track. Uh, this is traditional drum machine generally in this setup. Um, this is using a, a few live synths, but also a drum machine. And then up the top here, I've got the uh, System One. Uh, M, which is kind of acting, I mean, it's going to vary from song to song, but in this song, it's just the bass line, and I couldn't ask for a better bass line, I mean, it's like, it's just a really thick sounding bass, I'm using the uh, SH-101 plug out to make that bass sound, so <clears throat> I'll just walk through some of these tracks, so on track one, I've got this beautiful pad, which I will play.
so I've got a um, I've got a filter, or I should say I've got a low pass filter running on every single track attached to this scene. So every track will fade up with the fader um, individually or all together. So this pad's really beautiful, and you can hear um, there's some uh, what do you call it side chain compression going with the with the kick drum. That's actually baked into the sample. I just I just rendered it out from Ableton with the sidechain compression on because I knew it would be helpful <laughs> to have it in there, and uh, I didn't really want to rely on the tried and true method of the uh, Octatrack to do um, LFO um, sidechain, which I have done here. Like I've actually got that set up, but it's it's sort of just enhancing what's already there, um, and. To very briefly explain what I've got here, I've, I've designed an LFO shape to hit on every um, quarter note, and uh, it's, uh, do I mean quarter note? Um, <laughs> you know what I mean, on, on every kick drum basically, and I've got it um, set to the amp volume, and I've got the depth right up, and it's set to just go uh, exactly in time with the kick, and that's a, it's a nice trick on the off track to get some sort of fake side chain compression, especially if you've got very straight beat, like a you know four four sort of dance beat or something like that. But I've also it's also just been baked in. So if I turn down the depth and I press play again, you can still hear it. But if I um, if I turn the depth back up, it's very subtle, but it's slightly more pronounced. <clears throat> anyway. That's enough of that. Um, I'm just going to reload this. So, that's the first track. It's that really nice pad. I, I faded in with this, so... And to prevent um, sort of uh, <clears throat> weird tails being cut off at the end of the loop, even though it's a really long loop, I do have some reverb going on it as well using the dark reverb, and I've got, uh, no, that's it, that's all I've got. Um, so let's move on to the next sound. So again, that's from UVI Falcon. All of these sounds are from UVI Falcon. Um, they do sound a little bit more lo-fi now that they're in the Ultra Track. I've got to say, like when you know when they're in the computer, um, when you render them out from the computer, even they sound really lush and smooth. And when you put them in the Ultra Track, it's not like the Ultra Track down samples them or anything, but by the way you process the sounds, the way you boost them, um, and now I've also got the reverbs on them and stuff to prevent the tails. You end up with a slightly more crusty sound. But in addition to that, <clears throat> when I played this live set in my studio the other day, or this live track in my studio the other day, I changed the tempo to 103, which you can see on the Digitact over here, and the original tempo is actually 113. I'm not really sure why I did that, I think it was just a mistake, but it, it sounded nice at the time, so I sort of just stuck with it. But it does mean that the samples are going to sound a little bit more lo-fi, because <clears throat> they're being time-stretched down a bit. Um, so let's move on to the next sound. So you can hear that uh, fake sidechain LFO. Oh, it's not fake. It's actually baked into this one. You know, just it's quite pronounced. So I think that's just a really lush, beautiful sound. Um, I made most of these sounds. I'm like programmed them. I do I do have a bunch of presets with it as well, which are really uh, excellent presets. I usually tweak them before I use them a bit just because, you know, presets are, are great, but they're always, um, they're always like made to sound great on their own. And then when you actually want to put them in a track, you usually have to strip some stuff away or change the way they work a little bit. Sometimes they work just straight off the bat, but usually not. Um, so that's a really nice sound. Um, <clears throat> and then I've got this one. Oh, 
Oh, it just keeps going like that, doesn't really change much, but it sort of adds a bit of texture, a bit of background uh, noise, which I think adds to the effect of that dreamy atmospheric state, you know. Um, and this is probably my favourite sound. Anyway, so I think that's really dreamy, <clears throat> and all of that together sounds like this. very very tasty <clears throat> but I also have a bass line running on this so I'll mute all of this and it's a MIDI track and it's going to the Rolling System 1 and I'll play that right now So I think that's an excellent sound as well. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, uh, I find most of the sounds I use that I make myself to be pretty excellent. Why wouldn't I? Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to mute that and we're going to move over the circuit real quick where there's not a whole lot going on. But um, So before I brought this out onto the hardware and it was all in the computer, um, I didn't have any of these parts which are on the circuit. Except for like you know the kick and the hi hat, which um, which are in the in the computer as well. But I didn't have this synth part, for example. And I didn't have this synth part either. So those sounds I think are both really lovely um, and I did actually record them back in and incorporate them into the final track as well which I'll upload later but uh, for the time being rest assured it sounds fucking incredible. Um, <clears throat> I've also got these drum parts. Now, the kick drum is purposefully uh, sort of been designed to be quite, uh, not, not bassy really, because the original kick came from the Digitac, and I wanted the two to work together, like this is kind of like a toppy, uh, sort of punchy kind of kick, 
And then the one on the Digitact, which I'll bring in now, is um, a lot more thick and bassy. Now, one thing I would like to do in the future is to get myself a master clock, um, a hardware master clock for all of my gear, because I find um, everything's running off the Digitact at the moment, and I just find like timing with my gear when I'm syncing it to the computer, when I'm syncing it with each other, it's just not as rock solid as I think it should be. And I think you can hear that with these kicks. They're just... They're just slightly off, you know, um, and it creates a sort of weird effect, which I don't really love. When, when the track's all playing, you don't really notice it, but um, when you isolate them like that, I think you can notice it. The circuit is really great for little sounds like that. Um, in fact, so is the mono machine. The mono machine and the circuit uh, have some things in common when it comes to making weird clicky sort of rhythms like that. I like that. Um, I've just got some high hand. And um, they all have reverb on them as well. Like each of these, the, the two synth tracks got some delay and got some reverb, and so do the drum tracks as well. Definitely got some, um, the hi hats especially have definitely got some. You can see, I mean, I don't know if you can see, but you, you can see if you know the way the circuit works, like. Select the reverb and then these control the different parts and the, the light shows you how much of that part is being used. Or how, how the depth of it, I should say. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the circuit. That's, that's it. Uh, but I think there's some really great sounds there and they, they work really well. Um, the Digitax is the last one and it's kind of where the track begun to begin with. It, I actually started with this, uh, this little beat. which is, you know, the most basic fucking beat in the world. And I recorded that in and I made some stuff with that and then I went in a slightly different direction. And those, those little beats, uh, the, those two initial sounds, they don't really, I don't really use them in the final product anymore. Um, but I do use this sound. which is a really spaced out sound and I really like it. Um, and it's basically just using this sample. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, am I even on the right track? Yes. Um, <clears throat> the sample is sample 80, which is grainy. And I've got heaps of reverb going on it, just heaps. Um, a little bit of filtering, stacks of reverb. Um, oh yeah, and, and some uh, filtering on the LFO, some LFO control in the filter frequency to give it that sweepy, nice effect. Um, and then over here, we've got some more sort of hi-hat kind of sounds, I think. Well, there's definitely some LFO going on the sample tune. And there's an envelope on the filter <clears throat> to give it that squelchy sort of sound. I don't know if you call it the squelchy, but you know what I mean. Sort of slightly filtered sound. Um, and the whole beat, including shit, including those initial elements that I didn't really use, sounds like this.
I didn't really quite go that crazy with the analog heat in the live video I did, um, but it's kind of fun to play with. So anyway, that's kind of like the whole shebang. Um, so you can actually watch the video, I'll link to it just here. Um, it's, I think I was pretty proud of it to be honest. And I recorded it with my new GoPro, which is what I'm recording this with right now as well. Um, and yeah, it, I don't know, like I just really love this setup. Um, and I really like using the Octatrack in this way, which is not as creative, but it's like differently creative. And it means that you can, um, you, know, you can use the Octatrack to play extremely long samples and get uh, really pr sort of professional sounding results. Um, when I say professional, I mean like studio results almost without the use of a computer at all when you're playing live. Um, and and it's that's especially handy for like soft synths because obviously bringing a soft synth on the road is not something you can really do unless you bring a laptop or unless you sample it, which is exactly what I'm doing. And uh, some soft synths just sound so fucking good, so like of course you want to use them live. Uh, and this allows me to do it, and it allows me to do. I mean, like I can. I've, I've got a very minimalist setup going here. I've got very little going on, but I could have heaps of scenes. I could add heaps of different wacky effects, I could do a lot with it if I wanted to. Um, I just don't think it's going to suit the track that I've, that I've got here. Um, <clears throat> but you totally could, and I will do that for other things. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just really like using the Octatrack in a whole bunch of different ways. Like, it's so versatile, there's so many different things you can do with it. And I love using it creatively in a really glitched out way, doing lots of really warped stuff. And I also like using it in this way, in a, really, sort of, in a more arguably like mundane way, but it's still exciting, um, I think. Because you can get some just blissful sounds. And people are asking, oh, where are those sounds coming from? I'm like, look, they're just samples, you know? It's a sampler. <laughs> it's just playing the things I tell it to play. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> it's it's not like the Octatrack is the sound of those pads, you know? It's a sampler. It will play whatever you want it to fucking play. Um, and it also, and having the Digitac right next to it, 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 it both samplers, and it, this allows me to free up the Octatrack from playing beats, because it can play beats really well, obviously, but the Digitac having it just sitting here just means that that's my beat machine, this is my, this is my like long samples, this is my weird effects. Um, it, it makes this more exciting to use, because I've got more options without just being like, oh, i got to use it for beats as well. Um, so that's kind of it, it's, um, that's going to be this video. Uh, <laughs> so like and subscribe and comment and tell me what you think and all of those stupid things. Um, and I'll be back with another video soon. So see you later. Peace.